John Patron is a very ambitious company and a very successful one as well. What do you think are the three key elements that have catapulted you to such a unique market status? So just how important is the travel retail distribution channel to you? Well, let me take the first part of your question. There's the three main reasons why we've been successful. It starts with the product. If you don't have a high quality product like Patron, you don't have a chance. The second thing is you have to communicate the fact that the, everything about the product's made by hand, 100% recycled glass, and so you have to communicate that to the consumers. And the third thing is you need people in the industry that can communicate that and execute your strategy. So that's that part of the equation. But why, why is duty free so important? It's because it's a luxury showcase. And what we're selling is an ultra premium white spirit, not a tequila. Within the general expansion of the company, just how much of a part has travel retail played? Well, travel retail was the channel that gave us the opportunity to get outside the United States. Six or seven years ago, 99.9% .9 of our business was done in the United States, and we wanted to be a global brand. So the first place we looked was the most obvious, travel retail. It's the showcase to luxury brands. And when you look at our package, we're a high-quality luxury spirit that's affordable. And people don't mind reaching in their pocket for 40 pounds for a luxury spirit. The other thing is, our brand is different, better, and special. When you look at the selection in the spirit section of Duty Free, you see scotch and cognac. We gave life to the tequila segment. Nobody looked at that segment. The retailers or operators were selling $8 and $10 bottles of standard tequila. We came in, thanks to our our competition because they never paid attention. They left the door open for us and we kicked it in. And now the operators are selling $40, $40 or 40 pounds for an ultra premium tequila. Moving on, just how do you see the market developing? Picking up on your point I mean, earlier about premiumization and you know, $40 right. bottles of uh, tequila, is the launch of Extra Anejo Tequila here in Orlando indicative of your increasing belief in premiumization? Well, what we know we do well is ultra premium spirits. We can't go downstream, we need to go upstream. And in the travel retail channel, they want brands that can extend their portfolio. And Extra Añejo does that. We're gonna sell a tequila, extra age, three years old, at $349 per bottle. So the operators love that because there's profitability, again, in a segment that there never was profitability. Our challenge is we got to get the operators to expand the facings of Patron vis-a-vis -vis the other standard tequilas so they take advantage of that profit opportunity. Well, I think that's an inevitable ask from you as, as yeah. a business, but, I mean, coupled with that, I mean, could it be argued that retailers in the Americas are simply not doing enough when it comes to retail theater? Without question, and when you say retail theater, there's a number of things that I go into that equation. You know, tastings, contentainment like they do at World Duty Free, where people feel good about, you know, the segment and the section. But also, we educate the consumers. We have, if you can't taste the product live, we have cakes you can taste. When they talk about retail theater and you have live bartenders and tasting ladies in the operation, we have glasses from Rito where we can educate the consumer the differences between why ultimate vodka is better than other vodkas in the marketplace. So then your engagement, because it is all about engagement. You think retailers could still do more though? I mean, is, is the initiation of these activations largely down to you? Or are they actually coming across and jointly developing ideas with you? I think some of the retail operators are far ahead of others and there's a lot of catching up to do in this industry. And again, I think that when you look at it, World Duty Free is you know, by and far the leader when it comes to retail theater. I want to move on to a very different area of your business. Just how much is social responsibility a pillar to your business? Well, as the chairman of Discus, which is the spirits industry's strongest trade organization, we place huge you know, responsibility on making sure us as suppliers and manufacturers teach the public about social responsibility. When you look at the statistics, and I'll, if I could quote the United States because I'm not an authority on every country, but in the United States, uh, underage drinking has declined each of the past 20 years. 
drinking and driving has declined each of the last 30 years. So I think the suppliers as a whole are doing a hell of a lot when it comes to social responsibility. And also, we've lobbied the U.S. government and the Center for Disease Control specifically that drinking spirits in moderation is one of four healthy lifestyles. Healthy eating, exercise, no smoking, and moderate consumption of alcohol is the Center for Disease Control says leads to a healthy lifestyle. So I'm very proud of the work that Discus does. So, for the next 12 months, what do you want to achieve as a business? I'll tell you, Peter, if I could achieve one thing in the next 12 months, it's getting the operators to understand <laughs> that they need to throw the support fully behind Patron in the tequila segment. And again, I won't reiterate the profitability opportunity, but there's so many satellite stores and airports, and they feature Patron in the main store, but when it comes to the satellite stores, they go right back to their old ways yeah, of you're promoting. marginalized. Yes, and that's not fair. I mean, if you want to maximize the profit opportunity, you need to have Patron Tequila and Patron XO Cafe in those segments everywhere in the retail stores. That's pretty straight talking, John, but the fact is that you don't stand alone in this business community. So you've got very strong competition right. from uh, other liquor houses, uh, you know, scotch in particular, vodka certainly, which you omitted to mention earlier on. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the retailers themselves are juggling a lot too, aren't they? They absolutely are juggling a lot. But what I would say to you is this, none of the competition paid any attention to our categories. So we were the first ones and now we have the credibility because of the success, due to the retailers, they gave us the opportunity that they should stand behind the leader in the category. You think about all the different categories. There's a number one, and then there's everybody else. And we're clearly the number one in that category. And now we're extending that to the coffee tequila category. When's the last time, I'll ask you a question, Peter, that somebody introduced something exciting in the coffee category? I can't remember. No, it's Patron Tequila two years ago with the coffee liqueur. And now we're bringing energy to that category. You know, by the way, s success speaks for itself. Our results to date are up 35%. And that's a result of good marketing, good communication, and support from the retailers. We couldn't do it without them. That's a good point on which we end this interview. Thank mm -hmm. you very much indeed, John. Thanks for your time.